Don't you just love that sound? You know, this Winchester, this Moroku Winchester 1886 is getting to be one of my favorite rifles. Not just because of the form factor, but also the 4570. But you know what they say, whoever they are. They say that this is really hard to take apart and put back together again. But I'm here to tell you, after about 50 tries, it's not that hard. And so if you'll stay with me, we're gonna push Humpty Dumpty off the wall and see if we can put him back together again. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll spend some time at the range, and every now and then, we'll reconvene right out there in my shop, or at the farm in Louisiana, where I'll build some fun projects, and we'll share an adventure or two that'll make even a grown man smile. And in today's video, we are going to take him apart and put him back together again. But I'll say this, the first time that I fully disassembled the 1886, my son was with me and it took us collectively about four hours to get it back together. And then it was over a period of months with me trying again and again different ways to reassemble that I finally figured out ways that are pretty straightforward. And so that's what I'm gonna share with you in this video. And where it makes sense, I'm gonna get in really close and show you the details of what I do to make things line up and make everything come back together like it's supposed to. And so at the end of the day, I hope two things happen. Number one, I hope that we've gotten this Winchester Humpty put back together again. And number two, I hope it's been, will have been helpful to you so that you'll feel more confident to break into your own Japanese Moroku Winchester 1886. And you know what else? Um, oh yes, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And then, you know what, if you click on that little bell, YouTube says you'll get notified every time I upload a new video, which happens usually on Tuesday. Now, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the cradle. This is um, the first revision that I made as soon as I got the rifle. It needs some tweaks. Um, it's not ideal, but it has uh, served me. It has served me well so far. But one of these days, I will uh, come up with a different design, and maybe I'll share that with you, uh, 1886 fans as well. So, uh, but for now. If you're going to ignore the uh, yard guys outside making racket, I also want to talk about the uh, screwdriver set that I have. Uh, it's a Wheeler Engineering set. As you can see, it has lots of tips, and I've actually taken the tips that I need to use for this rifle. I've mod I've modified them so that they are um, so that they're smooth. They don't have any sharp edges. I've rounded off the corners a little bit, polished them, just trying to uh, to not have opportunities to scratch a, a really nice rifle here. I know it's going to get worn, and believe me, uh, I've already used it and will continue to use it a lot. But uh, but as much as I can help, I'm going to try to try to avoid scratches. And so I've actually uh, picked out the five screw uh, uh, screwdriver tips that I need. Modi modified them all, there they are, and that's what we'll be using here. Now the first thing we're going to do is take the stock off, and uh, there are two screws that hold the stock on. One is in the top of the tang, right here, and then there's one in the bottom. This one in the top is actually a machine screw, and the one in the bottom is a wood screw. Now the first time you take your stock off, it's going to be pretty tight because Winchester Moroku did a pretty good job of making uh, the wood fit well. But after you've had it off a couple of times, it eases up. And I just use a rubber mallet, but I've made really good. I've made sure to uh, to uh, grind off all of the potential burrs and boogers and hard spots and things like that, so I don't actually dent the wood. Just like that. The, the next thing we'll need to do is to capture the uh, the mainspring. The mainspring's down here. And we need to capture that to take tension off of the hammer. And the way we do that is we cock the hammer. And then you'll see there's a hole right here. And we'll put, the, uh, put this little nail in that hammer strut right there. Release tension. 
pull the trigger, release tension on the hammer. And now that we have the uh, tension off the mainspring, let's remove the hammer screw. Now it's not going to come out because it's still under some tension because of the sear. But we'll take our punch. Push it out. Now we can remove the lower tang. It's a lower tang assembly. We don't have to do anything else with that. Now we'll take out the hammer. It rotates out from the inside. Now we're going to do two things. One, we're going to loosen the, this is the carrier spring. And then we need to take this screw out of the safety bar so the safety bar can fall down out of the way. <laughs> and so I'm gonna, the way I do this, I loosen this, uh, this up a little bit. And then I'm gonna squeeze on the, on the spring right here and pop it, pop this pin out of the hole and that makes getting it out much easier. Okay, now we're going to take out what Moroku calls the locking bolts. Most people call these locking lugs, and these are what make the Winchester 1886 so strong. So I'll take out this retaining screw. And then the locking bolt stop pin. What a name. Now, it does have, it does have a slot making it look like a screw, but it's not. It's just a pin. And it's held in place by this little screw. And you'll notice there's a crescent-shaped cut in the top of the, of, the, of the pin, and that screw fits right in there, and that's how it all goes together, it goes back together. Let's take out the locking lugs. They just slide right out. One on the bottom. Aha, it doesn't come out. So, wonder why. Let's take a look on the inside, and I'll show you. Now the reason the locking lug won't come out is because it's captured right here with this arm. And so I'm just going to remove this arm up out of the way. There we go. And now that lower locking bar comes right out. Locking lug. <laughs> Even I can't remember what to call them. Okay, here's the fun part. Now we're getting into the meat of things of why why the 1886 is hard to work on. We're gonna pull out this assembly and all of this is tied together right now. It's the, it's the carrier, the carrier link down here, the hand lever and the breech bolt. And so the first thing we have to do is take the, the pin out of the breech bolt. Now the breech bolt can come out, but here is that assembly of the carrier, the hand lever, and the carrier link right in here. So let's take these apart. There's the hand lever, the carrier, and the carrier link. Okay, so there you are. That's as far as we're going to take it apart. Now let's put it all back together. Okay, here are all the, the parts that are going to give you grief on the reassembly. But first thing I want to do is take out the ejector. It has three parts. It has a ring. It's actually a rub ring or compression ring. I forget what they call it. A spring and the ejector itself. And... When everything is fully installed, the hand lever cams on that ring. More on that in just a minute. First thing you're going to remember is that we took a pin out of the breech bolt and it should go back in. But the problem is it hits the firing pin. And so first and foremost, when you're putting everything back together, you have to somehow depress the firing pin 
in order to get the pin to go back across. So keep that in mind. That's one thing we have to deal with. The other thing we have to deal with is the ejector. Because the, the hand lever cam, if you're installing everything as an assembly, the hand lever, cam, hand lever needs to go in at about this orientation. And so it pushes the ejector out and if the ejector gets too far out, then if you look right through this hole right there, you can see that the ejector has a part that gets in the way of the hole as well. And so you have to manage that or the pin is not going to go in. So you've got two things that, that will keep the pin. So you have two things that will keep the pin from going through one or going back in. One is the ejector and the other is the firing pin. I'm pushing on that firing pin right now. Can you see right here? Okay, so those are the challenges we have. Now, there are two schools of thought on putting everything back together. The one that I first learned was that you assemble the carrier, the carrier link, and the hand lever all into a sub-assembly, and you install that all at the same time. Let me get my note out of the way. And the way to do that is you take the carrier link in this orientation and you slide it right down in here. And you rotate until the boss on the carrier link down here goes into the slot. Like that. And now we take this assembly and we lay it on top of the hand lever. And then what we're going to try to do is to get this boss to go into this hole. And there it is. Now the problem that people will talk about is you can get this in place you can get it all installed, and then you manage somehow to get this hooked up again, and then the, the carrier link pops out, and you've got to start all over again. And so some people have recommended that you actually put a rubber band around this joint to keep everything together, but to me, that's, that's problematic. And so I modified the typical clothespin, added a little clearance in here, and then I will just use this. to hold everything together. So now I can do anything I need to do and that assembly is not going to fall apart. And the other option, and I'll show you both when we put it back together, but the other option is to assemble the hand lever through the receiver onto the breech bolt first and then fish these other two parts, the carrier link and the carrier, together onto the hand lever once everything is installed. So I'll show you both ways. Let's get started. Okay, since I already have this thing installed, let's go ahead and do this method first. So I'm going to make sure that my ejector is correctly installed. I'm going to get this started. And then we're just going to nurse this thing right through here. And of course, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get these two parts lined up right here. And let me make a little bit of an adjustment here. Okay. Now let's just go right in here. So I'm trying to get the hole in the hand lever lined up with the hole in the breech bolt. So I mentioned that the hand lever, the cam on the hand lever can push out the ejector and that's true but that is okay to a point because there is a point at which it will clear and it's actually and I'm holding it with my finger on the other end on, with this finger I'm holding the ejector 
And now I'm going to put the pin in from the bottom side. And I'm going to get it to go through first, the hole in the hand lever. Okay, now I've pushed the pin in until it hits the firing pin. And so now I can push with my thumb on one end, my finger, my thumb on the firing pin, my finger on the ejector, push together, and then push up. And of course it won't go because here's what happened. <laughs> it's, it's good that this didn't go right. Because I let the firing, the, I let the ejector come out too far. Okay, so here's what we're going to try to do. We're going to get the, we're going to get this assembly, the, this part of the hand lever, or this hole lined up with this hole in the breech bolt and it's going to push out the ejector a little bit that's okay we're going to try to manage that and then we're going to try to get the pin back in so i've got my finger holding the ejector on one end now and i've got the holes pretty lined up here now i'm going to push the pin in from the bottom And if you remember, that pin is not going to go because it's going to hit the firing pin. Let me get this lined up. And then you hear the pin click as it goes through that. There it goes. So the pin now is through the hand lever and the first half of the breech bolt. Now I'm going to push on the firing pin on one side and the ejector with my finger on the other side. We're gonna to push together. And at the same time now with my, with my middle finger, I'm gonna push up on the pin. There we go, so everything is together. Now, I'll flip it over. And then we're going to tap this pin home. Okay, now we will just nurse these parts home. I'm going to take the pin off. I can hold this with my fingers now. So this part right here is kind of a problem because it wants to fall down in the way. And so I'm just using the carrier spring to lift it up and then I can push everything home. Okay, there it is. It's fully installed. Now let's take it back apart again and I'll show you the, other, the alternate way to put this thing together. Okay, so let's go about this one layer at a time and let's just get these two together. So I'll stick this through here first. So I'm gonna put the pin in from the bottom and then I'm gonna hold it with one of my fingers. And then at the same time, putting a little pressure now, I'm gonna find the hole, there it is. Now I'm through to the, now I'm through to the firing pin, so I push on the firing pin. Pin comes the rest of the way. So now the pin is far enough in to hold the hand lever. So there we go. Now let's tap that pin home.
Okay, so that was really easy to get these two together. Now we have to get the carrier and the carrier link installed. And it's a little bit of a little bit of a challenge, but not too bad. So this goes in just like before. We get it down in this slot and then we rotate it until we have the pin in the till we have the pin in there like this. There we go. Okay, once we're to this part, once we're to this point, we're home free. So we've got a basically a functional 1886, except we're missing some locking lugs. But before we put the locking, lug, locking lugs on, we've got to get the hammer. This is our other issue that we've got to deal with because we have we have this hole, this hole. And these two holes all have to line up. So that's what we're dealing with now. Now it took me a long time to figure out. Well, first of all, let me just say, this um, this hammer strut has been modified because there should be another there should be another link le length to this part right here. This is actually what controls the rebounding hammer, and it's been removed. So my hammer does not rebound. I don't know if that makes it easier to assemble to reassemble or not, but in any case, this strut right here, this one is full length. This one has been shortened. It took me a long time to realize that this spring-loaded sear putting pressure on the hammer made, in, made installation really difficult. And so I came up with my spring solution. So here's my string solution. Pull on the trigger, wrap it around one time, embed it into the spring. Now the hammer is pulled. And so that means the sear, that means the sear is down out of the way and it should make reinstallation easier. Now all we have to do is make sure we get our hammer strut up and it needs to go in this pocket right there. Now we're looking to get all of these parts aligned right through that hole. Okay, I just made a, I just made a common mistake because I went ahead and put the rear strut in before I fixed the safety bar. So we're gonna have to take it apart again. So we need to reinstall the, the screw that goes into the safety bar. In order to do that, we actually have to line up these two holes and they're under spring pressure. I'm gonna use some help here. So it helps to have um, it helps to have the breech bolt as far forward as you can get it, 
and still have clearance to move the hand lever out of the way for the rear tang. So that facilitates getting everything lined up. And at the same time, if the breech bolt is too far rearward, it's going to cock the hammer, which is going to put pressure on the mainspring, even though we have the pin, which is holding it out of the way. And so just like before, I'm looking down through the hole, making sure everything is lined up. Nope, oh, but I don't have my string on. Okay, now let's install the carrier spring. Got a pin that's got to go into this pin hole right here, this hole. Now let's get our locking uh, locking lugs in place. So in this case, we're going to have to drop we're going to have to drop this piece down in order to get the locking lug in, just like that. And we want to line up here. Okay, I just learned something as I'm as I'm making the video. Um, I was having a hard time getting the, this locking bar in, this locking lug, and so I cocked the hammer, and that frees the hand lever up, and now it goes right in. So there you go. You, you just never quit learning. So our pin goes in, and we line up the crescent. Okay, the only thing left to do is to put on the loading gate. Now the loading gate is hinged, and it's got a leaf spring, and the, the tip of the leaf spring fits underneath there. And so the only trick here is keeping this in the right position while we get it installed. And I do that by putting a match or something once I get the, see how it's, it's come out. And so I need to get that hooked back up underneath there. And now I'll put this in there and I'll use the matchstick to hold everything in place while I get it installed. Okay, the only thing left, after knocking over my camera, Okay, the only thing left is the uh, is the stock. Okay, I'm going to call that a wrap. And I'll tell you what, it actually works. And that was one of the harder videos that I've done. Not in that it was hard to put the rifle back together, 
but it was hard to do it on video and trying to get all of the details. And I suspect I've left some holes in what you'd like to know. And so if I have, please let me know in the comments and maybe I'll wrap up or maybe I'll put together a, uh, an off cycle video where I'll fill in the blanks for, for you Winchester 1886 Moroku guys who might like to know a little more information. So until then, I'll see you in the next video and don't forget to subscribe.